Hello everyone. I hope the summer finds you well and healthy. Uh, yeah, I apologize for such a long lag between videos, but I'll continue our article that we started a few weeks back um, from the Missio Immaculate magazine, uh, volume 15. So this is the January, February edition. And we're gonna, we're going through the Queen of Peace and the co-redemptrix link. So this one is written by Dr. Courtney Bartholomew. We did the introduction already, so I'm gonna continue in our article and read about the miraculous medal, the apparitions of the miraculous medal and at La Salette and how this contributes uh, to um, revealing our Holy Mother as the Queen of Peace and the co-redemptrix. I'm going to change our style of videos too. I'm going to put some um, pictures instead of um, holding the camera in front of the magazine because I'm kind of worried that you guys are getting, might get dizzy because my hand might not be as steady and, and stuff like that. So hopefully this works much better. We'll see. It's, it's worth a try. Um, and, and I'll also finish our reflection um, taken from a, some words taken from St. Maximilian Colby and I'll be pulling it from the Aim Higher and part one on the Immaculata. So I'll read a reflection as well. So let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Miraculous Medal on July 18, 1830, the Blessed Virgin came to a humble and narrow back street in Paris called the Rue de Bac. It was in the chapel of the Mother House of the Sisters of Charity. It was there she showed Catherine Labore the Medal of the Immaculate Conception, popularly known as the Miraculous Medal. On the first side of the medal, the fingers of the Blessed Virgin Mary were seen to be covered with three rings from which sprung rays of such brilliance at, that her feet in robe were no longer visible. Behold, she said, the symbol of the graces which I bestow on those who ask for them. This undoubtedly implied that she is the mediatrix of all graces. An oval frame that appeared around the, the edge of the image Following a semicircle inside the frame were the words in gold, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. She therefore identified herself as the Immaculate Conception and as the advocate who pleads to her son for us. The Virgin's foot was standing on the head of a serpent, signifying that she is the woman of Genesis 3.15. The medal was then seen to turn around and Catherine saw an M surmounted by a cross, all in one unit, and beneath there were two hearts which were side by side. One was seen with a crown of thorns and the other was pierced by a sword, depicting joint sorrows of the Redeemer and his co-redemptrix. On the edge of that side of the medal were 12 stars, indicating that Mary is the woman of the apocalypse, the woman of the end times, Revelation 19 to 12, verse 1. They also refer to the 12 tribes of Israel and 12 apostles. Indeed, all the symbols of Mary are represented in this medal and are linked to the proposed dogma of Mary, co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. Remember that this vision happened in 1830. 1846, La Salette. Sixteen years later, in 1846, Our Lady appeared on the mountaintop of, at La Salette, France, to two children, 
Melanie Calvat, and Maximine Giraud. Giraud. A luminous cross bearing the crucified Christ hung from a chain around Our Lady's neck. A hammer appeared on one end of the cross and a pair of pincers on the other. Filled with sorrows, she was shedding copious tears. Melanie became a nun at the age of 20 and she died on December 15, 1904 at the age of 73. 14 years after her death, her remains were found to be intact and were placed in a, in a magnificent tomb in the middle of a church dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. Pope Pius IX gave his approval of authenticity on September 19, 1851. Pope John Paul II also had a great devotion to the La Salette Shrine. On May 6, 1996, he wrote, La Salette is a message of hope sustained by the intercession of her who is the mother of all peoples. May she lead to her son all the nations of the world. Letter to Bishop Louis Dufault of Grenoble. Twelve years after the Mother of Sorrows appeared in La Salette, she appeared on February 11, 1858, to a 14-year-old, uneducated peasant girl, Bernadette Subaru, in the humble grotto of Misabel. It was the first of 18 apparitions in Lourdes. When Bernadette asked the lady her name, she raised her eyes to heaven in an and an expression of reverential gratitude and humbly said, I am the Immaculate Conception. It was on March 25th, 1858, significantly the Feast of the Annunciation, when we commemorate Our Lady's fiat to Gabriel, her consent to become the Mother of God. Note that she appeared in La Salette before appearing in Lourdes. It was sorrowful before Immaculate. 1917, Vladimir Lenin in Fatima. Vladimir Lenin returned to Russia from Germany on April 16, 1917, to lead the Bolshevik Revolution and establish atheistic communism in Russia. He was an apostle of Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883 whose philosophy was that religion is the opium of the people. Lenin's alley, Gregory Zinoviev, boasted, We will grapple with God in due season. We shall vanquish him in the highest heavens. End quote. Significantly, Our Lady appeared some 40 days later. On May 13, 1917, at the Cova de Ira, in Fatima, Portugal, to three young children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco. The word era is of Greek origin and means peace. It was a hollow owned by Lucia's family. She wore a white mantle falling to her feet, edged in burnished gold, and a prominent star shone from the hem of her robe. It is remindful of the Old Testament Queen Esther, whose name means star, who interceded with King Ahasuerus of Persia to save her people, the Jews, from annihilation. In her second apparition on June 13, 1917, Our Lady of Fatima showed the children a vision of her heart encircled by piercing thorns, which obviously represented her sorrowful heart. She made no reference to it, but her silence spoke loudly. As the World Apostolate of Fatima once wrote in a booklet entitled Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, quote, At Fatima, our Blessed Lady asked that the, her Immaculate Heart, that free gift from God's grace, should be specially honored, but it would not have been in accordance with her perfect humility had she exalted her own merits in proclaiming the glory of her sorrowful heart. It is therefore incumbent on the faithful to complete the message of Fatima by obtaining through ardent prayer the consecration of the world to the sorrowful and immaculate heart of the Mother of our Savior." End quote. 
The following month, on July 13, 1917, the Queen of Peace said to the children, I want you to come here on the 13th day of every month and to continue reciting the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace in the world and the end of the war because only she can help you, end quote. And it was on her last apparition at Fatima on October 13, 1917, that she said, quote, I am the Lady of the Rosary. Lucia wrote, quote, We beheld St. Joseph with the child Jesus and Our Lady robed in white with a blue mantle beside the sun. St. Joseph and the child Jesus appeared to bless the world, end quote. Our Lady appeared again, and this time it seemed to me that she was Our Lady of Sorrows, end quote. She ended the tableau by appearing as Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the brown scapular indicating the importance of this sacramental. Indeed, the first church dedicated to her while she was still alive in Israel was on Mount Carmel, and the Carmelites were the first Marian order. There are two statues of Our Lady of Fatima. The first one depicts her as she appeared to the children in 1917 with a star on her robe, as, as we have said above, when she requested devotion to her Immaculate Heart. The second depicts her as she appeared to Sister Lucia in 1929 in the, at the convent of Tui, Spain with her heart pierced with a crown of thorns and flames signaling her sorrowful heart. There are many replicas of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima all over the world found to be weeping. It is Rachel weeping for her children because they are no more. Jeremiah 31 verses 15 to 18 and Matthew 2 verse 18. And that's the end of this article reflection. Now I will read a quote from St. Maximilian Kolbe. This is taken from Aim Higher and it's about the Immaculate Conception. Immaculate Conception does not mean as some think that the Most Holy Virgin did not have a father on earth. She came forth as a children of this earth having been born of a family and having a real father and mother. She is called conception. Therefore, she is not God, who has no beginning, neither an angel created directly by God, nor like the first parents who did not begin their existence by conception. She is even called conception, not in the same way as Jesus, who, though conceived, nevertheless, as God exists from eternity, but she is the Immaculate Conception. By this, she differs from all other children of Adam. Thus, the name Immaculate Conception is appropriate to her and to her alone. So let us finish our reflection now, um, making the daily prayer uh, to renew our total consecration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Immaculata, Queen and Mother of the Church, I renew my consecration to you this day and for always, so that you may use me for the coming of the kingdom of Jesus and the whole world. To this end, I offer you all my prayers, actions, and sacrifices of this day. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you for those who do not have recourse to you, especially the enemies of the Holy Church and those who are recommended to you. Amen. O Immaculata, please intercede that love of all believers may overcome every division and discord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a pleasure to pray with you and reflect with all of you. May God bless you.